Thank you. Good afternoon, members of the press. And I'll start with our press release to give you an update of where we are. CALPA has been working tirelessly to resolve the issues at hand. We would like to confirm that as of early today, we are in contact with the Cabinet Secretary of Labor, Honorable Florence Bore. She graciously agreed to convene a meeting today that will bring all concerned parties together. We are waiting for the time of the said meeting to be communicated to us and will remain available throughout the day. Contrary to reports circulating that we have refused to negotiate, we would like to clarify that we have made all attempts to breach the gap between Kenya's management and ourselves. We have sent our proposals both to Kenyaways and the concerned ministries on Friday, Saturday, and yesterday. This afternoon, we sent another proposal with even further concessions. On the other hand, Kenya has made no concessions from the proposals they presented over two weeks ago. They have made it clear that they will not meet until our members resume their duties, yet this is contrary to the spirit of negotiation of a return to work formula that is founded on dialogue. This is not a show of good faith. We continue to urge Kenya's management to meet us at the table and negotiate with an open mind. Management's ego and chest stamping is to the detriment of Kenyans at large. The persistent harassment and intimidation towards pilots agitating for their rights serves more to agonize than inspire confidence that management is concerned about their welfare. This adversarial approach will not achieve our common goal of getting Kenya areas back to full operation. It is very important to note that what our members are holding out for is all within the confines of a mutually agreed collective bargaining agreement. We have not asked for improved terms of service. We only demand that Kenya's management honors agreements already in place. Kenya's CEO continues to peddle the daily loss amounts of our airline in cars daily. Yet our contractual pension provident fund costs the company only 60 million shillings a month for all 3,800 Kenyan staff. Yet, inexplicably, he's willing to let the company lose 300 million shillings a day. The plight of our colleagues and passengers is not lost on us. We reiterate that our members are ready to go back to work at the earliest opportunity to discharge our duties. As a matter of fact, our pilots have sat here for two days and counting to execute their functions upon the signing of an agreed position, whereas our proposal sits at the management table gathering dust. We would like to sincerely thank all other stakeholders, including KOTU, Law Society of Kenya, and Federation of Kenya Employers for their offers to mediate the impasse. We welcome their involvement. We remain committed to finding an amicable solution to this situation. Thank you.